Wikipedia is just chock full of these charming little reference globes. They're everywhere. And they've got this subtle illumination quality that I really like. There's a faint radial shadow on the lower edge of this globe, hinting at a slight overhead illumination. This sort of offset radial gradient is a common convention in cartography. Here's an especially beautiful example made by Soren Wall Jasper for National Geographic magazine. Now, creating a radial fill in ArcGIS Pro is straightforward. What's not straightforward is offsetting it. How do you do this? Well, I tried a bunch of different things and none of them worked. So I used my phone a friend and called up Warren Davison. and He had some ideas. I showed Warren what I had so far. This is an ArcGIS Pro project with a 2D map in it. And that map's coordinate system is the world from space, which kind of looks 3D, but it's 2D. Warren. Hello, John. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, before we get into weird business, is it also the most beautiful day in the world where you are? Uh, it's pretty good. It is 21 degrees Celsius. I'll let your viewers do the math. It's 51 degrees Fahrenheit here. So Warren and I live uh, like a hundred miles away from each other, but across an international boundary, he's just over the lake from me, Lake Huron. Yes, and there's lots of, you know, lake effects, so the weather is entirely different all the time. So yesterday I sent out the bat signal saying, I just want to be able to do this, and I can't figure it out. And I like to navigate and go spelunking and dig around in the rabbit holes of the symbology panel. I had hit a roadblock and so I asked you about it and you're like, I got a couple ideas. Let me send some things in the morning. And you sent me back like a PDF with sequences. Let's walk through what those are. So I have global background here, which is like the pivotal layer. And there's a link in the description of this video where you can find this global background layer. It's just a rectangle that covers the whole world. You can download a local version of it and use it for a kajillion different things. And uh, Warren uses it in this hack. Can you walk us through what your hack is? Sure. Thanks. So it's actually a bit of a callback to all your videos where you do uh, repeating symbols within a polygon and things like that. So we're actually gonna leverage a bit of that. So if you go to that global background layer, okay. what we're actually gonna do is uh, fill it with one marker. So if you go in and add a new symbol layer and you pick a marker, then what we can do is actually, um, we'll drop the background if you don't need it, so get rid of that. Okay. Gone. And now if you pop back out to your marker symbol layer, you can go and change that fill symbol. So like one of the first drop down tabs. Yep. And for fun, you can kind of go in there and do the format. And we're going to change that solid fill to a gradient fill. And we'll do a couple quick things here where we change the direction to be, yeah, discrete to continuous just to get a nice smooth gradient. And then you'll see you've got, you know, a bunch of crazy patterns down there. Let's, okay, let, yeah, let's tweak nice this. Gradient. So I'll do this and I'm gonna make it, what am I gonna make it, Warren? Semi-transparent black to fully transparent black. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go 90% transparent black and then I'll make this one black. And I'll say, yeah, 100% transparent black. And I'm going to drag this about halfway down the gradient. So the, the shadow will only render about the, the second half of the sphere. So I spent up. far okay. too long trying to figure out what your gradient settings were when you sent me your screenshots. <laughs> I didn't get it right. All right. So that well, I've got a good looking gradient. Should I just hit apply real quick? Yeah. Okay. Just Okay, Let's so we have. Happening. It's just repeating. Yes, we have a pockmarked, dimpled golf ball Earth. Oh, yeah. I'll hit back. So now I'm diving back to that first layer of our symbology panel. Yeah, and now we want to tweak how that marker is being placed within our polygon. So if you want to scroll all the way down to marker placement, we can change that uh, placement from fill polygon. Put another option there at center. So now we've only got to have one. Okay. And the uh, method... I'm going to hit apply real quick yeah, as I do this. Fun. So now instead of it a matrix of them, it's just got one and it's right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then the method, I think, that's on polygon, so we don't need to change that. 
and for fun, before mm-hmm. we do the last step, let's yeah. just blow up the size of this thing that matches the size of our globe, okay. roughly. Okay, um, I'll make it, I don't know, like 800 points. Sure. I'm just going to guess that's Sweet. a little too big, 600. Oh, okay, but I want to offset it. So the the crux of this is I want the light to appear that it's coming from the top and the shadows closer to the bottom. How can I move the origin of this circular gradient so that it's up higher? Well, we're just going to use that uh, that position cluster of options there. If you want to do, I always get this messed up. Whether it's, it's negative or positive, uh, well, let's go I negative. do too. Okay, negative negative twenty percent. Ah, yes. Okay, that yeah. and negative was the right direction, but now I've yeah. got a little bit of a gap here. So I'll just increase this until it fills the earth. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Maybe 800 points wasn't so bad initially. Let's see. I'll try 700. Okay, we're nibbling away. Oh, it's going to be it's going to be 800. <laughs> it is 800. Okay. So now we have a marker symbol that's physically offset so that we can kind of push up our radial gradient but the problem is we've got all this extra overlapping radial gradient that we don't want that we want to clip away so we can get rid of that with that handy dandy clip marker to boundary checkbox glorious i didn't know this existed that's where the magic happens okay so clip marker to boundary apply son of a gun it's Beautiful. So now we have the illusion of a light source at the top, a shadow at the bottom. We have an offset radial gradient, and I love it. And I'm just going to uncheck this solid stroke so we don't get that little zipper here. That's a good name for it. (laughs) There it is. We've done it. Thank you, my friend. Hey, Warren. No problem. Do you ever think what you could be capable of if you used your powers for good instead of evil? (laughs) Thanks, buddy. (laughs) <laughs> Appreciate it. No worries. Have a good one. Yep. You too. Bye. Now there is one catch to this devious hack, and that is if you zoom in or out, you can see the edge of that fake marker shape, which can be a problem if you were to insert this overview map into a layout. Warren's suggestion, also clever, is to set a reference scale for this map so that it always renders at this scale. When you zoom in and you zoom out, the shadow appears consistent. And at any point, you can change the style of this gradient or its offset position if you want a slightly different angle. And now you can populate the whole of Wikipedia with charming overhead illumination reference globes.